Hello! This week we're going to be talking about trigonometric identities. Just a fancy way to say the trigonometric laws. And just like we had exponent laws and log laws for exponential expressions, expressions and logarithmic expressions, we're also going to have laws for trigonometric expressions that will allow us to simplify them and that'll help us to solve equations and do all sorts of things. So, first of all, I just want to remind you of the basic definition of the trigonometric ratios when we think of angles being in standard position and drawn in the Cartesian plane. So if we think about that, we've got our three formulas for the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios. And we can actually use these to figure out some new laws, some new truths about trigonometric ratios. So for instance, one thing we could do is we could take sine theta and divide it by cos theta. If we do that, we get y over r divided by x over r. Of course, that's one fraction divided by another, so I just take the top times the reciprocal, the denominator, and that gives me my y over r times r over x. Multiplying that together, and then canceling out the common factor of r, we end up with y over x, which we then recognize as tan of theta. So that means for any angle theta at all, uh, sine of theta over cosine of theta is going to give us tangent of theta. Well, for any angle where the cosine of theta is non-zero. Okay? But it turns out wherever the cosine of theta is zero, automatically the tangent of theta is undefined. So even in that case, we still get this nice property. Okay? So that's a nice little law that we have right now. Tan theta can always be rewritten as sine theta over cos theta or whenever we see sine theta over cos theta, we can replace it with tan theta. So that's one of our first trigonometric identities, it's the tangent identity. Now, <clears throat> imagine we take sine of theta and we square it, and we add it to the cos of theta squared. Again, we can go back to our definition of the trig ratios in the Cartesian plane, and we get y over r squared plus x over r squared. Well, if we square both and then add them together, on that common denominator of r squared, we get the following. But remember that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Or another way of writing it, r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. All r is is the distance between the point on the terminal arm and the origin. So we can replace r squared with x squared plus y squared, and we see that we have one thing over itself, and that's going to be 1. So that means for any angle theta, there doesn't have to be any special property at all, we always have that the sine of theta squared plus the cos of theta squared will equal 1. And that's true for every angle theta. We always get 1 when we add up the sum of those squares. And we call this the Pythagorean identity because it comes from the Pythagorean theorem. Now, <clears throat> we'll do an example here. Okay, so first of all, we have our two trig identities here that we just discussed. There they are in their full glory. You need to memorize these. These two are very important, and I expect you to uh, memorize them, be able to use them at any time. And let's show just one way in which we could use these trig identities. Let's say that we've got an angle theta that has a terminal arm uh, in the second quadrant when we draw it in standard position. And we know that the sine of theta is 0.6. We can use the two identities above to figure out the other trig ratios. So let's put them back on the screen. So first of all, I could use the second one. So by 2, we know that for whatever this mystery angle is, sine of theta squared plus cos of theta squared will give me 1. And we know what sine of theta is. It's 0 0.6. All right. Now 0 0.6 squared is 0 0.36. And now we have an equation that has just cos theta in it is the only thing that we don't know. So we can subtract 0 0.36 from both sides. And now we can take the positive and negative square root. 
Well, the root of 0 0.64 turns out that's 0.8. Now, this is where the second quadrant comes into play. In the second quadrant, if we have a terminal arm there, we get that the cosine ratio, we think of the cast rule, is negative. Okay, so we're going to use that fact right now, and it means that we're going to take cosine of theta is equal to negative 0 0.8. And that's since the terminal arm is in the second quadrant. Now, how about the tangent ratio? Well, we've just figured out the cosine ratio. We already knew the sine ratio. We can put those two things together along with our first trig identity to figure out the tangent ratio. So by the tangent ratio we have that the tangent of this mystery angle theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. And we know what sine theta is, it's 0 0.6. We know what cos theta is, it's negative 0 0.8. So we've got negative 6 over 8 as our fraction or in lowest terms negative 3 quarters. So very quick to find our tangent ratio. And now we have all three primary trig ratios calculated for this mystery angle theta. We have no idea what the angle actually is. We just know its terminal arm is in the second quadrant, and we knew its sine ratio to start off with. So that's one way we can use the, these two trigonometric ratio uh, identities, the tangent identity and the Pythagorean identity, to simplify, to solve problems, and so on. And we'll see many more examples in class. Now before we finish off this video, I want to draw your attention to a little bit of history. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of notation that I don't really like, but it's what everybody uses, so you need to be familiar with it. Um, whenever we think of sine theta in brackets all squared, often it gets written as sine squared theta. Now, I don't really like this notation, but that's what's used, <clears throat> and we'll need to all get used to it. Now why am I bringing this up right now? It's because often that Pythagorean identity is written as sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. So we'll probably use that notation in class as well. And of course it doesn't just apply to squares. If you have say tan 5 theta, what they really mean by that is take the tangent of theta first and then raise it to the exponent 5, whatever that happens to be. All right, so we'll talk next about some more identities, um, but for now, practice uh, some problems involving these two key ideas and make sure you memorize them. Thank you.